So in the handful of years that I've been running this channel, I don't believe I've ever done a proper desk tour. Uh, my desk has certainly changed a lot over the years, but this is the first one that I'm actually pretty happy with all around. Stay tuned, because this is my desk setup tour 2020. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not, not, not that B-roll. That's uh, definitely not how my desk and pretty much every other creator's desk normally looks. Getting into the actual setup, what makes it a little bit different is the fact that, well, most of my videos are very dark and I like dark themes, if you couldn't already tell by my black walls. So again, the majority of the desk setup tour videos that I've seen, the thumbnails and the actual setups are like pristine white, you know, it's filmed during the day, beautiful light leaking in from windows. I wait till it's pitch black nearly midnight and this aesthetic isn't just pleasing to my like enjoying black on black type stuff. It actually has its purpose. If you look at pretty much every um, like Hollywood editors uh, editing bay and especially for colorists, you are pretty much never, at least I've never seen a like super bright white and multicolored um, room, so to speak. It is pretty much usually all black or very dark colors. Ugh. All right, so sitting. Obviously you do it a lot when you're editing or working in general, um, but especially if you're video editing, then you know that sitting is something that you're gonna be doing a lot. And therefore you've probably heard that getting a comfortable chair is extremely, extremely important. Now it's something that I've ignored for quite a number of years now since I got this guy. What brand is it? What model is it? I have no idea. Pretty much if you type generic chair into any uh, furniture or Amazon or anything, you're probably gonna get something that looks like this. Man, this thing has nearly destroyed my back. All the padding is gone in the seat. There's no like lumbar support at all. Extremely uncomfortable. Da 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 da. Ha ha. And this chair I just got literally a couple days ago or like a week ago. It even has a USB powered uh, massage lumbar support, uh, which is adjustable. So it can go as high up or low as you want, or just remove it. Same thing with this plushy headrest. Yeah, besides needing a little bit of WD-40 for the squeaks, uh, this chair is absolutely amazing. You know, if you're just lounging and watching something, it's got pull out kickstand for your feet, reclines like all the way, which I'm too scared to do. This is nice. So one of my favorite parts is the actual desk, which we're gonna get into actually at uh, the end. But on top of the desk, we have a fast charger so I can put my phone there. Even though it's not fast charging at all, it is wirelessly charging, so it's super easy to do and it gives me a picture for a couple seconds of my cute, adorable son. So the speakers that I use are actually uh, made by Fluence. These are the AI60, uh, six and a half inch bookshelf speakers, which uh, they're pretty great. Full transparency, they did send these to me like years ago. Um, they have a little hissing that I found. I don't know if it's my pre-production models or what, but when you're actually playing sound, uh, they sound pretty phenomenal. To the left of that, we have my 2013 Trash Can Mac Pro. Um, I've done a whole bunch of content and I've spoken on this a bunch. I'll put my Mac Pro like three or four years later review uh, card above here. This thing's still chugging along just fine. It's the base model. I did recently a couple months ago upgrade it to 64 gigs of RAM. This thing has handled like 10 layers of 8K red raw footage in DaVinci, um, all my 6K and 4K black magic stuff. Uh, yeah, this is a beast of a computer. Could be a lot faster, certainly, um, but no complaints. It's still chugging nearly seven years later. And you see a little USB-C cable sticking out here that I pretty much always have because I'm constantly offloading footage. Uh, since I shoot to T5 drives on my Blackmagic cameras, make it super easy to offload the footage. So I always have this cable sticking out here. Uh, I have all of my keyboards layouted here, which I recently did a video on how to edit 30% faster um, using this guy here, which is a fantastic pickup for like 60 bucks or so. So again, 
card above if you want to see that video. Here, so I have the MX Master, which, you know, again, every YouTuber has. This is still the generation one. This keyboard is just an Apple keyboard here uh, with like a $6 keyboard cover that has the DaVinci Resolve shortcuts when I was learning and switched to that full time last year. And then this is the Deluxe T11 like I was talking about. This is for editing super fast, basically macro keys. It also has an awesome dial right here, which helps me scroll, scrub through a timeline a lot faster and fine tune where I need to be so I can make cuts. And then I have the trackpad here. If I'm working in Final Cut, I use this for zooming in and out. If I'm on regular Mac, I just use this for general Mac uh, gestures. Um, since I am scrolling and pointing with the mouse, this is pretty much a gesture based tool. My main monitor right here, still my favorite monitor of all time that I've ever owned. You know, this is a monitor that unfortunately you cannot find anymore. It's been discontinued for a couple of years. This was like the first monitor at the time, especially in its price point to hit Adobe RGB at 99.9%. Um, and then 100% sRGB. Uh, so from a color standpoint, it's 10 bit. Um, the contrast is fantastic. So this is a true Cine 4K, meaning this is a 17 by nine aspect ratio monitor. Uh, so it's 4096 by 2160 instead of Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160. So for my secondary monitor, I'm using the, let's see, this is the Asus PB27Q, 1440p. So this was my first experience after 1080 monitor like years ago. I got this thing before I got the Mac Pro and it is still chugging. I mean, no dead pixels, no bad light leaks or anything like that. And then right below it is my entire life. Um, this is my, I call it server, but it's not really set up like a server. But the new 8D dropped, I believe last year and I have the SSD in the back, so it's super fast with the uh, hyperdrive. I've got about 38 terabytes in there right now, filling it up super fast, so I'm gonna have to add the two last bays. So I have that sitting under the monitor. It was like in the very back corner. You've probably seen all my other videos. It looked bad, it scared me because it was like on the edge of the desk. All right, and finally we can talk about the actual desk. Now, as I mentioned, this is a motorized standing desk. So right now it was at my sitting uh, preset and now it's obviously going up to my standing one. This also is the first desk that I've like properly cable managed. Now this is not to the extreme level of TLD today who literally like drills through his desks and like buys perfectly measured cables to fit uh, or at least it looks that way in the videos. But in terms of uh, your average everyday use, it's pretty cable managed. I have the cable organizer underneath. I have some cable sleeves, so you can see um, literally only one cable comes down into the outlet. Everything else is on a surge underneath. So I'm pretty proud of that, took a long time. You can see some cables behind like the main monitor, but again, it's pretty neat. What do you expect? You may be wondering throughout this whole video, what brand is it? That looks huge. I bet it was super expensive, even though I spoiled that it wasn't in the beginning. So my issue with standing desks is literally the expense anytime you go with a wider option. I mean, you literally like want five or six inches wider and that desk is instantly like $200 more. The bottom legs are actually from Monoprice. So I found a lot of bottoms for standing desks, which is basically the legs and the motor and the uh, controller, which yeah, you can see that right here, which attaches to it uh, for around 250 bucks for like an awesome dual motor or whatever. But the shipping was literally going to be $300. And that wasn't for like next day. That was like any of the shipping because it's freight. I don't get it either. But what they had, which I don't know if I was lucky or they always have those sort of deals. So I'll try to link the one I found in the description below uh, was this, which was the single motor for 150 bucks. And then this top is actually from Ikea. This was one of their newer ones at the time. Uh, it is a concrete feel. And what I like is I thought it was just gonna be a pattern, but it is actually textured because this is a legitimate countertop. They have it in two lengths. This is actually the shorter version at 75 inches and they have like a 90 or 92 inch version, which um, honestly wouldn't have been a bad idea, but uh, no, for this desk size, I'm perfectly happy with the 70, 75, whatever it is 
uh, length inch and this was um, around 80 bucks or 90 bucks. I had to get shipped since my local Ikea didn't have it so that's another 100 bucks. So again, yeah, 150 ish for the legs, 100 ish for the table. We're around 250 bucks for this entire setup. So there you pretty much have it. This is my desk setup of 2020, at least starting out. If you liked this video, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Like I said, I've never done one of these. So I would love to hear your feedback on what I can do better, what I can change for the next time. And of course, I will link as much of this stuff down in the description below. If you wanna see an entire look into my camera gear setup, so my gear closet, the cameras, the light stands, the lights, how I organize all that stuff, also let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to get subscribed so you don't miss any new of the videos coming out. See you guys in the next one. That almost was terrible. It's doing it again. Here it comes. It's inevitable. Camera's coming towards me. Tripod is falling. <laughs>